Sarah Kang. I grew up in Chicago and Dallas, um, but I was born in Korea. My parents immigrated when I was less than a year old. Um, I grew up loving music, loving to sing. My mom's a piano teacher. Um, but I think being a child of immigrants, it was never encouraged as like a career path to have a career in the arts. Um, it was more like you should be a doctor, lawyer, maybe a teacher. Um, so that narrative really like directed my life choices for a while. Um, I went to college, I got a degree in art history, which wasn't that useful. <laughs> um, and then I got a master's in music education. I think I always knew I loved music. And I was like, well, if I can't pursue it, I'm going to teach it. And I love kids, so I'll just be a music teacher. Um, and it's during grad school and college that I started writing music uh, just for myself. And then I was uh, teaching music at a school in New York City um, and I felt really burnt out. And I think, yeah, I finally got to the point where I couldn't run away from it. Like I had tried everything else, but I realized like this is my passion and it's kind of now or never. <laughs> um, so yeah, I quit my teaching job um, and that was back in 2017. So since then I had been like teaching part-time and doing music. Um, and this was my first year just doing music full time. Um, yeah, and I'm really glad that I get to do it, so. <laughs> so where did you go to school? I went to Yale. Um, it was an interesting like place to be. <laughs> um, it did foster like a lot of my creativity um, and has a great arts program. Um, and that's where I actually first joined an acapella group. And that's where I first like sang in front of people, um, in front of an audience. So kind of the seed was planted at that time, yeah. For your family and your friends, what was kind of their um, thoughts on you wanting to pretty much walk away from that education? Sure, um, so it didn't happen for a while because after undergrad, I went to Teachers College, which is the education school at Columbia for my master's. So I kind of continued that you know, higher education narrative for a while, for two years afterward. Um, but when I finally quit my teaching job, and jumped into music. Uh, my friends and my husband were super supportive. Like they're the ones who told me, this is something that you love, we can tell. You should do this. Um, my parents were like a little bit skeptical at first, but I think it was out of good intentions. Like they just worry that, you know, I won't be happy or I won't be able to support myself. Um, but I think now they're like, you know, my number one fans. My mom's like always on my YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. So is that where you're putting a lot of your music right now? Uh, and my music's available everywhere, like Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to music. My mom's just not like familiar with streaming, <laughs> but she knows YouTube. So she's always checking like, you have you know, this many subscribers today, or did you read this comment? Like, I think it's really fun for her. So how did you go from, from that just a few years ago to now you're on tour with Junie in Seattle? How did this opportunity come about for you? You know, I think um, I got really lucky in terms of timing. I think the music landscape now you don't have to be signed to a record label um, like Spotify if, it, if your music gets picked up by the algorithms like that really helps grow your to grow your listenership like it's it's possible to have um, to have a lot of listeners like as an independent musician now um, so I think timing wise it really worked out for me um, and I don't know, it's always like a mixture of like dedication and luck, I think. Um, so since 2020, I've been releasing a song almost every month, um, which is not easy, <laughs> but I think that's like really helped, that consistency has really helped um, people stay interested and to like gain new listeners. But honestly, like I think I got lucky too, <laughs> yeah. How has your time been in Seattle been so far? Um, it's been great. I have a few friends who live here, so it's been like a, a uh, good excuse to meet up with them. How are you with, with nerves coming out on his tour for this one stop? How, how are you doing with that? I was like pretty nervous today, <laughs> uh, but I've just been like relaxing and trying to calm myself. And um, it should be interesting because I know like Junie said and the other opener, Justin Park, has mm -hmm. said um, they're both like, they have a lot of like backing tracks and like it's very hype, like really fun. Um, but I'm just playing some songs with my guitar, so it'll be like a very contrasting experience but um, I'm hoping it'll make somebody feel something like that's the goal <laughs> I know this movie is ending 
If someone wants to uh, check you out, where can they find you online? You can find me on Instagram at Sarah Kang Music, um, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, wherever you listen to music. Search my name, Sarah Kang. Sarah with an H, Kang, K A N G, is what I always have to say. <laughs> and is there a song you would recommend for a, like a, a new person that may want to know about your music? That's a good question. Um, my most listened to song is called Summer is for Falling in Love. It would begin for summer is for falling in love. But my personal favorite right now is probably Now I Know. It feels like way back when I wish I had known it then. What are your, your goals no for your career now? I mean, it's always hard to quantify this, right? Um, but I would love to reach a billion monthly listeners on Spotify. That's like a concrete goal that I have. Uh, but long term, like I just want to keep making music on my own terms. Um, you know, work with who I want to, make what I want to, and yeah, that it still is like a fulfilling and meaningful experience for me and for people listening.